The process that is followed in Usul al-Fiqh is very simple. Verification of the command that is, is this really a nas a hukum or not and from where. Then historical background or context of the hukum, in what condition it was given and when we apply today, do we have same condition or different. Then as I said a while ago, cause, reason and application. What is the illa? What is the cause? What is the hikmah or wisdom and so on and so forth. And then ethical and social factors, which means what are the objectives, principles behind it. And then relationship with the nature, how it is linked with fitra. Is it aligned with human fitra? When you are doing something to human body, does it match with human nature? or you are causing a, a deviation from human nature. Human nature is reproduction. If you are stopping it artificially, then are you not causing the whole cycle of uh, uh, blood generation, blood distribution, nervous system, support from uh, inner limbs, everything disturbed by one intervention. Is it fitra or against fitra? So, in every single area I am referring quite frequently to issues that relate with health and uh, medical science because we have a large number of our faculty members from that faculty uh, allied disciplines uh, physiotherapy and uh, biomedical engineering and uh, uh, pharmaceutical sciences all these are linked together. Uh, so, so the, the, the human body has so many things which are uh, uh, based on fitra. And lastly, what is the relationship with human good? Masliha amma. If uh, uh, through uh, AI we make an intervention and we have a whole uh, uh, battalion of uh, robots under a brigadier, a brigade of uh, uh, people. Is that also uh, friendly for the people around? You may feel proud that now you have a brigade of uh, uh, AI soldiers, but uh, is that also uh, masliha, good for humanity? Is it also near nature? Nature wants that. So, every single aspect of jurisprudence is a matter of an ongoing rational process, analytical process, applied process and therefore, it is indispensable when we deal with thought, with culture, with civilization. Whatever we do in civilizational activities should have an objective. Is it serving humanity? When we are teaching, it must have an objective. Is it just for salary that teachers come to university and uh, uh, deport 8 hours or 10 hours in, uh, in exercise and just get a salary check in return of that? Or is it a matter of changing the personality, changing thinking process, mindset, giving something which is ethically good? trying to influence society, build character, make humanity more loving and peaceful or just a textbook to be recited in class or some notes that you prepare 20 years back are just uh, distributed or uh, written on a uh, electronic board and they follow it and nowadays uh, mostly virtual. Or teaching has higher objectives. Maqasid, what are objectives? That is why in Rifa, I always uh, talk about ilmun nafi, I always talk about values which are the basis. Knowledge without values is no knowledge at all. Only that knowledge is meaningful which is based on values. Mechanical knowledge cannot produce human society or human beings. 
it can only produce mechanical mind. Therefore, uh, the process and method is extremely dynamic, extremely important and very, very absorbing and interesting.